It's Jim Hutchinson with the Fisherman Magazine. About two and a half miles off the Jersey coast today, May 28th, 2020. About a year and a week removed from our 2019 Northeast Striped Bass Study. Last year, uh, in the lower Hudson River, we were able to deploy two wildlife computers, mini PSAC devices, and two pretty good sized striped bass as they uh, dropped out of the Hudson River post spawn. Those two fish uh, gave us incredible results, surprised all of us in terms of what they did for up to the next five months. These satellite tags tracking the migration of stripers for five months. We expect them to do one thing, and of course then we find a couple of fish uh, with returns from the canyons, which is why we wanted to get back out here again in 2020. We started a fundraising effort uh, in the latter part of 2019 into the winter, and then the COVID-19 crisis hit and everything fell apart. We were able to, in May, with Ray's help, to be able to secure a couple of tags from Wildlife Computers in Washington, which had a full shutdown for most of this crisis. So we did get these two tags, which is why we're, even though we're about a week removed from where we were in 2019, we're still in the midst of some really good striper fishing here in the New York, New Jersey bite. Uh, the goal today, May 28th, 2020, is to get up the Hudson River just below Manhattan to get some of those post-spawn stripers. But my friend Chuck Manny, $10,000 donor in the Northeast Strike Bass Study in 2020, is on a good line of fish right along the Jersey beaches. So our plan here, first thing this morning, is to see if we can't find a big old fat fecund female fish, a true boff. Not sure about what stock this is, whether this is part of the Chesapeake stock, but we're hoping to get that one good fish this morning before we turn our attentions as a team to head back up to Manhattan next to the Statue of Liberty. Hoping for the best today, looking for a big fish, and I'm pretty sure we're gonna find one somewhere. You was chasing it up when you were reeling it up. It was eight great days. Hey Dave, I love you. Love you more. <laughs> just imagine, like a year and a half ago, Dave was like just a total tuna guy. <laughs> Were you really? Yeah. Everybody's Oh, that's a good fish. Ready? Huge hook on this. I think that's a little bit bigger. I think so. Yeah, that's a little bigger. 100%. What do you think? Good. So we're doing two tides today. The hope is to get us a good fish in the morning somewhere off the Jersey beaches and then meet the rest of our team. Mike Caruso from the Fisherman Magazine who's on board Fin Chasers with Captain Frank Wagenhofer and the two of us, both of us, both boats, Tie Man and Fin Chasers, we're going to do the afternoon tide up on the lower Hudson River. Two fish, two tags, that's the goal. Let's see how we do. You know what they say, sometimes you got to deal with the cards as they're dealt, and that's exactly what we're doing. You know, we've got two tags and two fish that we got out front on the front beaches, uh, two and a half miles east of Highlands, New Jersey, 46 and a 46 and a half inch fish. Our first attempt up the Hudson at approximately the location where we were in 2019, the bite was off in between moons. But really happy to talk to Howard Owens, Captain Howard, and Jerry Gomber because these fish are starting to tumble out of the Hudson again. So despite the COVID 19 crisis, we did get a third tag. Got to thank the folks. Great fish tag research on this uh, the entire time. So the great research, uh, great fish tag research tagging team is back at it now, and we're going to go back up towards the Hudson River inside New York City and see if we can't find that perfect fish to tag with the uh, Northeast Striped Bass study. We're going to give them heck. We're fishing this morning in the mouth of the Hudson River in New York Harbor. The fish started moving out about a week ago and they left Albany, New York, and now they're just where we can get at them. What we're doing here is what we hope to be new science. Everybody has believed for a very long time that striped bass migrate north-south. The details of what happened with last year's two satellite tags show that they move a lot of east and west too, as they do move north and south. The east-west movement puts fish out into much deeper water where they're not pressured as much uh, by sport fishermen or in the selected states, commercial guys. 
And what we're hoping to do is to be able to prove that there are other population centers for these fish that haven't been considered over the last, say, 50 years when regulations have grown and grown to try and control the harvest and to allow the growth of the fish species itself. So this is our Wildlife Computers Mini PSAT device that we're using for the gray fish tag research uh, study today for the Northeast Striped Bass Study. Um, different than the, the streamer tags or the spaghetti tags, um, this is what's going to store all the information that we put in a striper um, for what's programmed for five months. So what happens is, this is all rubber band ready to go so we don't lose it. It's ready to deploy on the right fish. We'll use the stick. This is going to go into the dorsal. and. You can see the tether here is going to hold that that um, that unit, and it's it looks like it's big and bulky, but it's very very light. Inside is where it collects all the valuable information, the light and temperature. Um, for example, the light we knew from last year when those first two tags came back and they were well offshore in the canyons. Our first res response as a team was, oh, "We must have gotten eaten by something." Well, we know it's not because that would show in tip temperature changes and light differentials. So all this information is stored inside the tag. And again, like I said, there's a charge that's programmed. Um, once it hits salt water, it starts to register uh, at, at a clip. So after five months, this will um, become disengaged through a, char uh, through a charge. And this actually floats to the surface. You can see the antenna. Once this floats to the surface, and this is sitting on the surface, that's when it starts feeding the Argo satellite. Um, very similar to the tagging studies. Everybody knows about the great white tagging. But these don't ping until the, the shark is up on top. We've got these big stripers, hopefully. They're going to be underneath, so they're not going to ping until this comes becomes disengaged. The cool thing about this, of course, is that after five months, we can start tracking it on the Argo satellite. The folks at Gray Fish Tag Research will follow that. But the ideal is to have this returned. Needle in a haystack, right? We had the first of two tags last year. It came up on a beach in Massachusetts. So those folks that found it were able to return it down to Florida, Gray Fish Tag Research. The second one came up uh, not far from uh, where we are in Asbury Park. And that came up in October. And that's how once we got this back, the folks at Gray Fish Tag Research were able to open this up, pull all the data out, and we had all of that tracking information. So ideally what we'd like to be able to do perhaps is, is be able to plot a graph along the way, have this updated through the Navionics app at some point. But there's so much information in here and um, as we were talking about before, we are talking about it with Jerry Gomber, there's just a lot of science that can be thrown into the mix based on this study. And we're not necessarily the ones that are going to do the studies, uh, do the science. We leave that up to the folks at Wildlife Computers who can program this, to the folks at Great Fish Tag Research, and they're leaving all that data open, open sourced. So any scientist or researcher, college researcher, for example, can have access to this information in the future. So we're just hoping to provide the data, and what the scientists will do with the data in the future, well, that's up to them, and we hope it means something down the road.